so I, I will be talking about quantum jamming and especially uh, game jams in general. And well, a little bit about myself first. Uh, as I said, my name is Henry Sarasvirta. I've been doing games professionally since 2007 and been jamming since 2010. And this is my 60th game jam, if I count it correctly. And uh, if during the presentation there's any questions, please just uh, write into the Discord. I have it uh, scrolling there so I can answer immediately or after the uh, end of the presentations. So uh, for the quantum events, quantum game jams, I have participated in from uh, the first one in Tuorla, where we did this uh, quantum genesis for the half dome. They have their uh, two projectors running. And <clears throat> I actually uh, broke down the projector set in there. So I don't have any uh, like cool, cool uh, screenshots or videos from that because we didn't manage to uh, record the actual gameplay on the actual projector. Then in Heureka, uh, we also had this uh, half dome in use. We made a game called Jump Trails, which was an uh, online game where multiple, uh, actually two players would pilot uh, these spaceships and try to win, uh, try to do a quantum jump that was controlled by the um, other people with their mobile phones. And from that, we learned that don't use a Wi-Fi network when there's more than 100 people in the same room. It will not uh, work. Then in 2016, we did this quantum ship, which was uh, this inspection of how the quantum black box might work if it was done in a way that uh, involved ships evolving. Then in 2017, uh, this was uh, done in Turku, I think, and online. I participated online by making just a really, really fast prototype in seven or something hours that had only uh, sliders that you could connect to other sliders and then get results of the black box uh, calculations. And in 2019 was this the Jupiter Barbarian year and the uh, CLS pool quantum wheel was actually a really, really good experience. Whenever you get to go to sauna and swim in the uh, sea, everything's great. Then the, in 2020 uh, was the first year I missed, uh, missed the quantum game jam due to pandemic happening and stuff like that. And in 21, there was this uh, Games Now course and they had uh, have game jams and the fourth one was the quantum, uh, was one with the quantum themed and for that, I did the quantum cube uh, experiment that used Qiskit, Qiskit simulation in Unity. And then, oh, actually, I have four, four years there. Yeah, uh, last year's uh, quantum game jam that was online, I didn't participate. And now, this is now, and I have the wrong year there, but participating once again after the pandemic is so start to like, Solve. This is a screenshot of the uh, quantum genesis game that we uh, rigged a uh, this small uh, fabric to fake the uh, half dome projection, so we could actually get some of the video. Yeah, and uh, one generic, uh, really important thing about Jams is how to select a tool, especially with uh, when you're doing, if you want to do something with quantum mechanics, because usually you don't start uh, programming your own uh, set of tools for that, but you use uh, rather a library. So Unity is really popular and they have some uh, pre-made quantum mechanics components. For example, Qiskit has uh, the simulation, simulator and then the quantum black box uh, thing was also available in Unity. 
And then, of course, Python, I think, is the most uh, prominent of the quantum computing uh, languages uh, with a lot of machine learning thrown into it. And with Qiskit, you can actually run the real uh, uh, the circuits and real quantum computer with uh, Python. At least I remember, I think I we did have one to the Jupiter Barbarian where you actually could send the request to real quantum computer, but that um, that failed a bit because of the long queue time. So you could could play the game, but it would always take like few seconds or up to minutes after each command. So that wasn't really playable. Then uh, Unreal is starting to pop up a lot uh, in game jams, especially with Unreal 5. Though uh, that's more common where, when the jam length is more than 48 hours. So let's say one week, one month, or even one year, year jam, then Unreal starts to like be much more popular. And from the open source community, Godot is really good. And it's well, uh, it's gaining a lot of popularity, especially when, uh, when working in small teams, when you maybe don't want to buy the uh, licenses or worry about the uh, licensing fees of Unity and Unreal. Or if you uh, don't like the current uh, background of Unity, for example, they had this uh, company that merged with them that has a little bit sketchy history. Then, of course, there's a uh, web-based gaming. Uh, basically, write once, deploy everywhere nowadays with WebGL. And I, I think web is really easy to develop, though I've been doing web stuff for about 20 years, so that might be a little bit biased opinion. And you can integrate web stuff basically into anything because all languages support some kind of uh, socket based or HTTP based server stuff. And then there's the game engines without programming, for example, construct, Pitsy. Uh, that actually is missing one, Twinsy, which is the story based one. The selecting tool is uh, important part, but you can always even change the tooling during during the time when something sudden happens. For example, you lose the program, and then you could could still uh, change what tool chain you are using and just move all the assets to another place. And here's a screenshot of the uh, sheet game. Basically, you had a, on the left you had this tab that had all the simulation data. I don't have the screenshot of, of that. And then on the right, you had statistical uh, reporting of how your simulation is proceeding. And then uh, some development techniques for fast results. One of the uh, things I really like is rapid prototyping, which basically means that just create something, uh, see what comes up, maybe use like a few hours or maybe even a day. Just create a lot of uh, different mechanics. Don't worry about uh, the code quality, the uh, playability. Just create something. It doesn't even have to be uh, programmed stuff. You can use paper prototypes. Uh, you can use Legos. You can go outside and use pines, pine cones. Or even play with uh, like use humans as uh, chess pieces and try to come up with new mechanics. Just as long as you create a lot of prototypes in a really short time and then just pick one that seems to be uh, really good. That way you usually find out uh, something that might come out of the game jam that is uh, really fun to play and isn't something that's way too complex uh, to be actually achieved. And then one uh, 
think that at, at some point in every uh, jammer's history, they will have the point where they have to sacrifice the idea. So there's this really awesome sounding pitch and you're, yeah, this is going to be a great game. And after like 24 hours of development, you are, uh, this is not possible in this time span. So just changing something totally different. It's always acceptable and recommended instead of hitting your wall into the head for 48 hours. Also, uh, remember to pivot, pivot your uh, idea. So let's say you have an idea that we're going to do this uh, first person shooter that has uh, these organic shapes and whatnot. And then you accidentally make it initially uh, put the camera to wrong setting and it's a, a 2D game, but it uh, plays, plays out really nicely. So just why not go with that route because it's already proven that it works. So basically choose the path of uh, least resistance to get to your goal. And the goal post moves, moves along as you pivot your uh, game idea. And same thing is that just develop the features based on the current gameplay and how it feels. Not instead like, oh, this will be great after we use 15 hours to get this one really niche thing uh, working. So just feel out how the game goes and uh, follow the path of the river wherever it flows. And one pro tip, uh, how to make your game feel professional, just uh, for the UI elements, add small animations and for everything else, just instead of a uh, thing disappearing, make it like scale a bit and then poof, some particles. Really fast and easy uh, way to make things look pro. And here's the quantum black box. And then some uh, challenges I've come across with uh, quantum gems. Yes. Uh, one thing with the real quantum computers, the queues are bad, usually, and you don't usually have a, your own quantum computer to bring with you. And then uh, one of the biggest challenges I still have is, uh, what is a quantum game? So is it something that uses quantum computers to calculate something, or is it uh, run on quantum computers, or does it... Oh, does it have to have a, um, quantum mechanics in it? And my current uh, answer is that anything can be a quantum game, as long as it's uh, either inspired by quantum or has some quantum mechanics or anything to do with quantum or physics. Or actually, it might not even have to do anything with uh, those, because basically everything that happens is somehow quantum related in, in even normal computers. And understanding the underlying physics is uh, something that it's, it's not really easy. So, but luckily we have the physicists who are helping. And then the library integration. So if you want to have uh, use uh, real quantum computers or Qiskit or the black box, there might be some uh, challenges to integrate the tool chains. And this was the Cupid the Barbarian. And one uh, thing that well pops up in many of the games is like, what are you trying to do with quantum in your game? So are you trying to visualize the mechanics? For example, the hamster wave and uh, entanglement hypermass and synopsis pixies are some of the games uh, have, that have been made during the champs that visualize some aspect of quantum mechanic. Or then you could uh, actually run parts of your game on real quantum computer, the Cupid the Barber, uh, random number generator, uh, ran the maze uh, tiles as qubits, and it could run on the uh, IBM cloud, but really slowly. And then the quantum battleships is one of the first first quantum uh, games that uh, runs on real computer, I think. Then there's the visualization of uh, quantum programming, for example, quantum cube and cue cards, a few of games that 
med uh, use of that. Or then you use quantum mechanics to get insp inspired, make the story about it, uh, uh, inspired mechanic by the quantum nature. Or then uh, crowdsource real life challenges into gameplay. So use game to solve some kind of quantum uh, challenge. For example, the quantum ship type to gamify the black box tuning and then heat box which was made at the same Otaniemi jam, used VR, uh, virtual reality, to uh, simulate the quantum black box uh, end results. And this is the quantum cube. And some generic uh, tips and tricks. I think Arko already said a lot of these yesterday's speak. So remember to sleep, eat and drink. So keep, uh, take care of yourself, because it's not fun to be tired all the time and hungry and thirsty. Don't hit your head in the wall. There's always someone who can help. Use version control. It's really nice to have even for non-coders. And I recommend it for everyone, even if you are doing something else than games. Just anything you do, use version control. It makes your life a lot easier. And have the game ready one hour before the deadline, so you can actually create a video in time and do the uploads in time and have customized its IO page. And remember, don't uh, stress about the game not being good. Uh, learning is the most important one and having fun. So don't uh, stress. It's, no, it's not a competition. And remember to sleep. This was the quantum uh, jump trails in the half dome and then any questions and I can check there. This is also the cheap game. Uh, do you feel that uh, you have learned quantum physics through these events or have they motivated you to study quantum physics? I would love to say that yes, but uh, sadly I don't think no. I, st I still don't understand how quantum works. Though I uh, now understand that it's not such a mystery, it's more about uh, the statistical outcome of an actual calculation. But still, uh, the underlying physics is a mystery. But it uh, is already a good learning outcome, what you just said to us, that you understand the statistical nature of quantum physics. This is brilliant. I mean, why not? <laughs> yeah, it's just like instead of trying to make it uh, use it as a like uh, executable thing it's just like something that you use the value out of and then get some kind of nice results and then there was a question uh, if you could have just one game engine what would it be uh, uh, because uh, my uh, basically daily daily development is for web i would say just uh, pure web cl so no game engines. That's a programmer's like perspective. Or actually, at the, at the current moment, I would say uh, programming only on the GPU, so skipping CPU totally. And there's no no engines there. 